Santa not being there. Of all places for Santa to be in his sleigh, stuck in the sand thousands of miles from the North Pole, way down in Florida. And without his reindeer, because they were so hot, they took off to the North Pole. What a predicament. Especially the long beard and the red velvet suit and the white fur. That's a lot of heavy clothing to be worn on a beach in Florida. And Santa was mighty uncomfortable because the sun in Florida was certainly a lot hotter than any sun at the North Pole. Poor Santa. What would he do? What a predicament. Well, first thing, Santa always has to be presentable. So he put on his thinking cap. I wonder what he came up with. Oh, woe is me, oh, woe is me, who will set old Santa free, who will give me a helping hand and get my sleigh out of the sand, my reindeers left me sitting here. It was just too hot for them, I fear. My predicament lacks its usual cheer because Christmas Day will soon be here. Who will, who will help me? Who will set me free? If my friends knew where to find me, they would be here. One, two, three, so here I sit patiently stuck in the sand oh woe is me looking and waiting for someone to get my sleigh out for day is done oh woe is me oh woe me. Who will set old Santa free? Who will give me 
a helping hand and get my sleigh out of the sand. My reindeers left me sitting here. It was just too hot for them, I fear. My predicament lacks its usual cheer because Christmas Day will soon be here. Who will, who will help me? Who will set me free? in hundreds of years and I got stuck. My sleigh came right down here in the sand. Kerplunk, we hit hard. Are you hurt, Dana? Oh, 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 no, I guess just my feelings. But my reindeer, they took off for the North Pole. They tried so hard to get me out of the sand, but they just couldn't do it. And then it simply got too hot for them, so off they went to the North Pole without me. 
Why do you want to be here now, Santa, in the hot sun? Well, you know, this is the time of the year when we make our free Christmas trip around the world and we find out who's been good and who's been bad. We'll help you, Santa. How will you ever deliver the gifts? And what will happen to Christmas without you? Well, now you know that old Santa has never let you down before and Santa isn't going to let you down now. But you must remember that you must keep faith. You must believe. Hey, Santa. Why don't you take one of those planes that's circling around up there? That might be a good idea, except what would I do with my sleigh? Hey, Hawk, could that be Santa Claus? Hey, it is Santa Claus, Tom. But what do you suppose he's doing here? I, I don't know, Hawk. He looks like he's stuck in the sand. He is stuck. Hey, do you think if we stick around a while, we'll find out what happens? Yeah. that too. I guess we're just about ready to try everything. So you just take him around, take him around the front and then back him in. Back him in and we'll see what happens. Take him around the front. That's it. Just around the front of the sleigh and then back him in and let's see if he'll take off. That's it. Back him in. Bring him in, bring him in. Come on, you have to try harder. No, I guess not. It just simply isn't going to work. Oh, no, I guess not.
right to help you, child. Let me see what we can do. All right. I'll get around on this side, and let's see if we can turn him around. That's the idea. Hold him. Now, come on. Bring him in. Bring him in. Come on. Oh, let's pull harder. I, we, well, he's in the wrong way. Now we have to get him out again. Pull harder. Oh, I don't. Harder. Oh, let's pull. Oh, no. It just simply isn't going to work. No, 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 no. No, oh, let's take him out. Take him out. I'm sorry, dear. You'll just have to take him away. No, I guess not. Nothing is going to work. Nothing. else's work, and if this horse doesn't do the trick, I just don't know what will. Oh, he's a nice little boy. That's a fine looking at him. Well, son, what do you think? Shall we give it a try? I'll try if you're willing. You think you can back him in? All right, go ahead. Come on. Come on, big fella. give up. Let's not give up. Let's try to get him in. Push. Let's all dig in as hard as I can. Oh, he just simply won't move. Oh, no. No, no, no. Good try, old boy. Nothing is going to work. Santa Claus. Oh, now, what do we do? What do we do? Oh, nothing's working. Nothing is working. Nothing. By golly, it is hot. I have never been so hot in my life. Oh, look at that sun. My golly, I've got to try to get out. All those little boys and girls all over the world waiting for their present. Oh, I've got to get out of here. Got to get this sand out as much as I can. Oh, I can't disappoint all those lovely children all over the world. Oh, I've got to try. Got to try. Oh, Oh, I guess that isn't going to work either, and it is so hot, so hot. Oh, dear me. Oh, look at that sun, glaring 
down. Poor Santa. He was so discouraged. Nothing seemed to work. But Santa is equal to any emergency, and he'll think of something. I wonder what it will be this time. Now, everybody gather in a little closer. Come on. That's fine. And I'll tell you a story that proves that if you have faith, then all your dreams will come true. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful little girl named Thumbelina who escaped from her kidnappers. And she endured all kinds of hardships until one fine day she met her Prince Charming. Now, she never gave up hope. And like Thumbelina, you too must never give up hope. You must believe. You must always believe. Just have faith. Keep a smile on your face. And believe. And all your dreams will come true. to do 
something about it. Day after day, I put the kettle on, and no one comes to call. I'm getting so tired of being lonesome. I know. This afternoon, I'll go see the witch, and maybe she will bring me a little girl. I didn't leave much in witches and sorcerers, but after seeing Thumbelina, I had to believe that she came from a magic spell cast by a good witch. This good witch lived in a cave not far away from the house where Thumbelina was to live. This witch had many secret ingredients with which she worked her magic. It must have frightened the prospective mother. by my own choosing. No one would have me. Please help me. I would be good to her, and I would raise her to be a beautiful young lady and give her all the advantages that I never had. Are you sure you want a little girl? Oh, yes. All my heart, I would like a beautiful, young, blonde-haired girl. You seem to be very sincere. Do you know what this will cost you? Oh, no. But anything at all, as long as you fulfill my wish. It will cost you 12 pennies. But you must promise to 
treat her very well. Because someday this little girl will be a princess. Oh, I promise. I will even treat her like a queen. I shall be forever grateful to you. Remember, treat her well, because someday she will be a princess. The mother was actually skeptical about the magic of the seed, but she wanted to believe. So she went directly home, hopeful that the power of the witch would be successful. Still early. I think I'll plant it now.
feel so small. But here on my table, I feel six feet tall. How I love my little dance floor on the tabletop. Round and round, oh, I could dance forever and ever and ever and never stop. so she can't escape. Thumbelina, where are you? Oh, Thumbelina. You're gone. You're gone. The little girl's plight was desperate until a fish felt sorry for her and chewed the roots of the lily pad loose so that it would float downstream, away from her captors. I'm hungry. Let's get some nice bugs to eat. All right. I'm going over this way. I'll go that way. I'll stay around here.
My, my, what a funny-looking bug you are. I am not a bug. I am a person. I'm a little girl. My name is Thumbelina. That cannot be true. Human beings are large creatures. You are smaller than we are. You must be some kind of a bug. I will ask the advice of my friends. She says she is a human being, but I think she is lying. She is some kind of a bug. She looks like a human being. They're so terribly ugly. But she's so small. I think she is terrible looking and makes me feel creepy. Why don't we mash her or squeeze her or pinch her or do something? The forest was filled with many scary things. And, although the little girl kept her courage up, it took many days to get used to her new life. She ate berries and nuts, and eventually learned to look after herself very well. She missed her home and the security of the tabletop, but was very happy to have escaped the marriage to a frog. Her life in the forest had become almost fun, except that summer didn't last forever. With the falling of the leaves came the cold winter winds, and finally the first snowfall. Thumbelina tried to protect herself as best she could, but finally decided that she must search for a place to live underground, like the other animals and I had done. to bother us, but was so cold that she finally gained enough courage to knock on my door. on marrying anyone. I am just getting started in life. There are so many things to see that I hadn't really thought of settling down. A girl cannot decide on those things too quickly. It's a big and cruel world. And unless you have a nice man to take care of you, terrible things can happen. Look at me. I am very secure here. My husband worked and worked and worked. 
But I think I am too young to get married. Besides, don't you think I should see more of the world first? I don't know, my dear. When I was young, we had no thoughts of such things. When we were old enough, we got married and went to work to be good wives. Maybe things are changing. Anyway, you eat your dinner now, and we'll talk about it all later. Thumbelina's life with me was very happy. She at last had security again. I made her a nice bed by the fireplace, and together we talked of many things through the long winter months. She yearned for a glimpse of the blue sky and of the trees and flowers again, but was content to stay with me underground until the snow went away. At last summer came, and Thumbelina could again spend her time above ground, enjoying the beauty of Mother Nature. like you to meet Mr. Digger. He lives near here, but he goes south for the winter. Now that it is spring, he is back again. And upon learning that you were my guest, he insisted on staying so that he could meet you. How do you do, sir? It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. My, my. What a beautiful child. You were right. She is exquisite. Like a beam of sunlight. Or so they tell me what a beam of sunlight looks like. I cannot stand the light myself. I have an excellent idea, my dear. My home is not very far from here. And there is a tunnel from Mrs. Mole's backyard. Why don't you come with me? and I will show you some very interesting things that I have collected from all over the world. Go ahead, my dear. There is certainly nothing to fear from Mr. Digger. He is a fine gentleman, and I have known him for a long time. He and my husband were good friends. Yes, my dear. There is nothing to fear from an old gentleman like myself. Come now. I have many interesting things to show you. Come, Tumbelina. Not so fast. I can't see very well in here. You moles have quite good eyesight in the dark. Oh, yes, indeed. It is the nicest place there is, these cool, damp, dark caverns. What a beautiful way to live. You don't like the blue skies and the trees? I like the tree roots. <laughs> they are delicious. Some of them, that is. But I have come across a few that are bitter. No, I mean to look at the trees and the sky and the clouds. No, that is of no interest to me. Besides, all those things hurt my eyes. What happened to him? 
was in the winter. He must have gotten caught by the early snowfall on his way south and then tried to crawl in through that hole to keep warm. Anyway, he's an ugly creature. Come with me, my dear. in many countries to have collected so many beautiful things. I'm glad you appreciate them, my dear. It's not often that someone as young as you notices the finer things. For instance, that chandelier. It came from an old chateau in France. And my stove. It was made by the finest Dutch craftsmen. My rug, woven by the oldest firm in Persia and my paintings, the best of the old masters. Yes, I've spent my life collecting nice things. And now that I am older, I have only one sorrow. A sorrow? How can someone as wise and as wealthy as you have a sorrow? Ah, but I have. When I was young, I worked very hard. And as I acquired my wealth, I spent it on all this. But my possessions and all my money have not brought me happiness. I'm lonesome. I wouldn't think a person like you could be lonesome. You have everything you need. And I'm sure you have many friends. Oh, I have lots of friends. But most of them would disappear very quickly if they thought I had lost my money. You are lucky, Thumbelina. When someone offers to be your friend, you know they truly mean it. Oh, you shouldn't be so serious. Pretty thing like you, lonesome. How could that be? I shouldn't really complain because Mrs. Mole has been so good to me. But I am very lonesome. You see, I was stolen from my mother by a nasty frog. And then I ran away and hid in the forest. I have really nothing that I can call my own or any place that I could call my home. It's such a funny world. Here I am with everything. And I'm unhappy. And there you are, a beautiful child with everything to look forward to, and you're unhappy. Come here, my dear. A charming young lady like you should not be forced to face this life alone. It can be very difficult. I am sorry for what's happened, and I wish it was within my power to make you truly happy. But alas, I do not know where your home was, and if I did, I would not know how to get you back there safely. It's true. I've wandered in the woods for so long that I don't know where I am. If only that frog had left me at home. From the moment I met you, Thumbelina, I have been enchanted by your charm. I know now that I am nothing except a lonesome old man. But I do have everything you need. I have a beautiful home and more than enough money to last you all your life. I hesitate in asking you, but under the circumstances, I think it would be appropriate. Thumb Thumbelina, will you marry me and live here with me? Marry you? Why, Mr. Digger, you just met me today. I know, my dear, but all of a sudden I knew it was the right thing to do. I want to protect you. I want to see that you are safe from all the things that could happen to you. Please. I know this is very sudden, and you don't have to give me your answer now. Go back and talk with Mrs. Mole, and we'll discuss it again in a few days. Please, Thumbelina. I know I'm not handsome or young, 
but you must think of your future. And I know now that I love you with all my heart. Thank you, Mr. Digger. I know you've meant everything you've said sincerely, and I will think about it. I didn't know it at the time, but Thumbelina felt trapped about the marriage. She had decided to go through with it now, dear, only to help I me. Know he is an older man, but he is very rich. He has many things, and he has much knowledge. And he will be very good to you. But why can't I stay here? I am getting older, and my store of food and things left by my husband is running out. I imagine there is enough to last me all of my days, but with extra mouths to feed, what am I to do? I am getting too old. Oh dear, I didn't know I had been imposing on you. Isn't there something I could do to help? Of course there is, and you have been a great help doing the dishes and the laundry. What I am saying is for your future, for your own good. You should seriously consider Mr. Digger's offer. Most girls would be flattered. Oh, I am flattered. Don't misunderstand me. It's just that, well, I thought love and romance were beautiful things, not just a practical affair. They are. But as you get as old as I am, you realize that one has to be practical. Then you'd like me to marry Mr. Digger? I think it would be the best thing for you, my child. That way, I will know you will be taken care of forever. Good night. Underground, who would want to lead a mole's life where flowers are never found? I have to feel the wind and rain. I have to feel the sun again because I am a flower child. Who would want to dig a tunnel in some dark? moldy place when you could be where the sun would shine warmly upon your face. I have to hear the robin sing and see the swallow on the wing because I am a flower child. to cover 
cover you so people won't stare. I do believe I hear a very faint heartbeat. Perhaps Mr. Bird is not completely frozen. Maybe this blanket and my warmth will thaw his cold blood. The blanket and Thumbelina's body warmth actually thawed the bird's frozen blood. It was slow, but she gradually nursed her new friend back to health. The bird, of course, was grateful, and so was Thumbelina. It took her mind off her marriage to Mr. Digger and gave her hope that all the things she found beautiful in the world were not going to be lost forever. Please, Thumbelina, smile, for tomorrow will be your wedding day. This is the time a girl should be happy, not sad. Oh, if there were just someone younger, or someone who is handsome, who is a human being like I am, someone who would come and take me in his arms, I would be happy to be his wife. Look, dear, it has really gone too far now to disappoint Mr. Digger. I thought you had decided weeks ago that it was the best thing to do. Oh, I know it is the best thing to do. But if only Mr. Digger were just a little younger. Why don't you go outside in the sunlight? There aren't very many days you can enjoy things like that anymore. I am sure Mr. Digger will want you to stay with him in his underground home. I'll go out. But first, I would like to see how my friend, the bird, is doing. Oh, that silly bird. I wish he would up and fly away. Oh, please. He is the only friend I have who wants to enjoy the blue sky and the forest. But he isn't practical. He nearly lost his life because he was caught in the early snow. He should have flown south long before he did. He said he didn't realize how late in the year it had gotten. He was so happy flying from tree to tree and bush to bush and enjoying the beautiful sky that it was too late by the time he started south. Oh, very well. You take some seeds to him. Oh, Mr. Digger, <laughs> you're an old rascal. Who ever thought you'd end up with a beautiful young wife? Maybe all the hard years of work were worth it. I'm going to make her happy. We'll travel together, and I'll buy her all the pretty dresses her little heart desires. She may be missing romance, but she's done the best thing for herself. Romance is for the young boys. There's nothing practical about it at all. Oh, Thumbelina, you have made me very happy. Oh, my friend is gone. My friend is gone.
matter. My bird is gone. He has flown away. You see, that is all the thanks you get. You nurse him back to health, and then he leaves without even saying goodbye. I told you these birds are silly, thankless things. Now you run out and play. Because tomorrow is going to be your wedding day. Thinking her friend was gone, Thumbelina was very sad. This would be the last time she would be above ground, the last time she would see the trees, and the last time she would see the blue sky. She must have been extremely happy to hear Mr. Bird's voice. Thumbelina! I have been trying my wings. I feel much stronger now. What's the matter? Tomorrow I must marry Mr. Digger, the mole. He's old and ugly and wants to live underground all the time. I will no longer get to see the forest and the butterflies and the beautiful blue sky. Do you love him? No, I don't love him. I respect him. And I appreciate what Mrs. Mole has done for me. She is just too old to continue my support. It isn't fair for her to have to worry on my account. Rather than marry, why don't you go away? There are many places for a girl like you. Where? I know nothing of the world or what to do. I would be lost, and a worse fate would befall me. That is not true, Thumbelina. Every summer I fly north, and as autumn comes, I fly south. I see many places and towns where they have people, people like you. My foster mother was not like me. I'm so much smaller. I know, but a mole is not even the same thing. You must find a person a human being to marry. 
I'm sure someplace in our travels we can find one. Our travels? Yes, I'm taking you with me and we are going south. Winter is coming soon and I don't want to be caught again. Thumbelina, you saved my life and now I'm going to try to help you. But Mrs. Mole would worry. Mrs. Mole only wants you to be happy. I promise when we have found the proper place for you, I will fly back here and tell her what happened. And you will tell Mr. Mole that I didn't mean to hurt his feelings or anything, or insult him. It was just that, well, I thought I could find a better husband elsewhere. Of course. Now climb on and let's see. Mr. Digger and I were disappointed to have her leave so suddenly. But after talking it over, we realized how much we had been asking of the little oh, girl. The world is so she beautiful. needed people of her own Thank kind you, Mr. and the things around her she I loved. I know not far from here. It's the kingdom of the flower children. Perhaps you'll like Are they young? Do they look like me? We will see. At least I'm up here in the sky at last. My poor mother never knew what was going to happen when she went to see that witch. I was happy there in my home, living in the walnut shell and playing games and dancing on the tabletop. I could look out the window and see things like I can here, until those nasty frogs took me away. I was happy in the woods, even though my mother wasn't there, except for the bad, ugly bugs who tried to squeeze me and pinch me. I'm glad I escaped from them. When winter came, I really wished I was back with my mother. I had no warm clothes, and when the snow came, I nearly froze. I tried to build a little house, but nothing would protect me from the cold winter wind. It was all that bad frog's fault. She should have left me with my mother. Mrs. Mole was certainly nice to take me in. She saved my life. I would have frozen to death. The only trouble was she hoped I'd get married. Poor Mr. Digger. I was so pleased to meet him. I didn't know how complicated my life was going to get. But Mrs. Mole wanted me to get married. She was worried about having another mouth to feed. Mr. Digger was very persistent. And his arguments made good sense. It was just that... He was too old, and the thought of living underground, oh, I'm glad I didn't go through with it. I hope Mr. Digger won't be disappointed. After all, I'm sure he can find another wife someplace, and I guess Mrs. Moe will really be better off without me. I did the housework and was able to talk with her during the long evenings around her fire. I remember how sad I was when Mr. Bird was gone. I think that was the saddest day of my life. But now everything is happy again. I'm going to a land where people look like me and act like me. I hope they'll like me. I don't see any people. Hello? Hello there. Is anyone here? Who are you and what do you want? I am Thumbelina. I was also born in a flower, but then I was stolen away and I have lost my mother. I have been searching with the help of Mr. Bird for some friends. Majesty, this little girl says her name is Thumbelina, and she was also born in a flower. You're finally here. 
Our history books have said that someday the rightful queen of the flower children would come. Her name would be Thumbelina, and she would become my wife. All that is in your history books? It is true. I have waited a long time, Thumbelina, but now I see you are as beautiful as the books said you would be. Will you marry me and be my queen? But I don't know you. I just arrived. Can't I live here a bit till I find out if I will like it? And like you? Forgive me. I've waited so long. But now stay with us a while, and I'll ask you again. Thank you. For the first time, I feel happy. I know I will like it here. This is where I belong. Thumbelina was with her own kind. She knew she could live with the flower children forever. So she agreed to marry and become their queen. Mr. Bird saw the wedding and flew back to tell us all about it. We will be happy ever after, you and me. Bed 
never, ever be discouraged. Never lose faith. You must always believe. Keep on believing. Believe only good things, and good things will happen. Okay? Come on up here, boy. He looks like a smart dog. I mean, but kind of small to be able to pull a sled. Oh, he's a small dog. Oh. But he can do anything. Well. And he can do real wonderful tricks, too. Well, if all the other animals couldn't get us out of this sand, I, I don't know if he's going to be able to do it He'll or not. think of a way. He's real smart. Well, I sure hope so. Looks like a good dog. He'll think of a way. I sure hope so. I sure hope so. Good dog. <laughs> Good dog. Good dog.
think I had better get my coat on very quickly. Can't let anybody see Santa Claus without his coat on. Now, we'll just put this belt on as quickly as we can and uh, we'll see what's going on. Buckle on and get it in the hoop. And now, straighten up a little bit. Now, I think we're ready. Now, let's see what all this is about. What is that? What is that? Oh, evening. Oh, oh, evening. We will set old Santa free. We will give him a helping hand and get his sleigh out of the sand. The reindeer slept in sitting here. It's just too hot for them we fear. His predicament lacks its usual cheer. The Christmas day will soon be here. We will, we will help him. We will set him free. If our friends do, where to find him, they will be here. When to drink, so very good, patiently. Stuck in his hand, oh, oh, we're Looking and waiting for someone to get his way out for a day.
Goodbye, children. Remember, you have to keep faith and you have to believe in everything will turn out to be just fine. Goodbye, children. Thank you so much. Remember, be good. I think that is you good all year long. Like magic. When Santa arrived back at the North Pole, they're waiting for him. What's his sleigh? 